Hello and welcome to the Somerville Neighborhood News Roundup. I'm Jane Regan, the coordinator of Somerville Neighborhood News, and I'm here with Stephanie Wittenbach, a reporter for Somerville Neighborhood News. Welcome, Stephanie. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here on this terribly rainy day. Um, the reason that I asked you here is I thought it might be nice to sort of take a look back at what we've been working on on Somerville Neighborhood News. Um, as you know, as I told you when I first uh, cajoled you and begged you to join our team uh, because I had heard great things about you, as you know, we're trying to get Somerville Neighborhood News back off the ground. Right. Um, it, it sort of was in, I would say, in hibernation uh, until about the first week of October. So now I think we're just coming into the second week of November. It's been about five or six weeks. And so I thought we'd take a look at uh, some of the stories we've been working on and maybe talk about some things to come. Um, what have you been working on? So in the past uh, six weeks, I've worked on three stories that have been published. Um, I have two stories in the works. Um, we talked about, we published a, um, CN, SNN about um, pot shops. We talked about like three recreational pot shops opening up in Somerville. Okay, well, we'll look at those in a minute. I want to know yeah. what you're working on right now. Right now. What's the thing that like, how late did you stay up or how early did you get up? There must, there must be something that's bugging you. So right now I'm currently working on lead in water. Um, lead in water specifically, obviously in Somerville. Mm -hmm. um, there are about 3.4% of homes, which comes out to 450 homes in Somerville that wow. have lead pipes, uh, lead services. Um, basically, people are drinking lead and they're either cooking with it. And so um, because of the Massachusetts Water Resources Authority, um, they were willing enough and funded $100 million to help out Somerville as well as 45 other communities um, to replace their lead, uh, their lead pipes. So right now, um, I've been talking with, um, the city of Somerville mm -hmm. and uh, a few other people to just see what, um, what really is happening there. Okay. So that, I guess we'll get a look at that work maybe next week. Um, what, what do you have coming out this week? Uh, this week, um, I have currently, I've been working on Foss Park. Okay. Um, Foss, What's the deal? Foss Park has terrible turf and um, they have a lot of things that need to be worked on, a lot of improvements that need to happen at Foss Park. And um, luckily, Baker, uh, the Baker and Polito administration have funded $1.2 million to go towards uh, new turf at the park. And this will include lighting there, um, uh, drainage improvements, and as well as the turf. Um, all other improvements is going to be based on the city of Somerville and what money that they can come up with. Um, but there's still a lot of reporting to do and a lot to uncover, so we'll have to see what, um, what happens. So did you t attend a meeting? I know there were some meetings. Yes, there was a meeting I attended November 13th. I didn't get to go to the one on October 29th or 30th. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, uh, they were around the same topic, and, and that's on appro uh, improvements at Foss Park. Okay, so I think that um, when, at the one that you went to last week, you spoke to the councilman uh, for that ward, which is Councilman Matt McLaughlin, who actually, you know, used to be an intern right here at Summer <laughs> Media Center. When I it was, didn't know that. Yeah, when it was called SCAT TV. He was my intern. That was back in about 2000. Um, so uh, I know that you don't have a whole video package ready, and you're still working on the article, but I know you brought in a clip of uh, what Matt McLaughlin had to say. So let's take a listen and take a look adamant about the fact that this is all we're getting from them uh, so I they have never said that they're gonna take care of anything besides the field and we are very grateful for having that field but this getting finally getting attention at Foss Park has brought up all the other issues and we're not getting answers on that so the city's taken it upon themselves to provide those answers but again if we're gonna be spending possibly millions of dollars on a piece of state property I don't want to have us spend uh, ten million dollars for trees or something and then the trees die and we need DCR to take care of it so everything everything we put in financially we need to be able to have control over well wow, that was great and I really look forward to reading the whole story thanks yeah of course um, so I kind of want to talk about a story that you've been working on um, for the past several weeks actually you've been working diligently and you've been doing in-depth reporting um, just Tell me a little bit about that process and um, 
uh, how you feel about wage theft in Somerville. Right, uh, that's a good question. I didn't even know what wage theft was. I'd actually, to be honest, I never heard the term. I was a little bit embarrassed. Um, and uh, I follow some email um, listservs that are involved with labor unions and labor groups trying to make sure workers get a fair shake. And I saw that there was something called a wage theft briefing up at the library. So I went up there with my little camera, which doesn't do that well, and the audio is not so awesome. And there were people from all over the Boston area um, reporting on what's been going on, not just in Somerville, but all over the country, it turns out. Um, what happens is bosses at, not all, not all, but at some restaurants, for example, don't um, give out the tips the way they should, or they don't give people credit for earned sick time, or they ask um, workers to go off the clock but to keep working or they're gonna lose their job, or they don't pay overtime. So I, um, I just thought, oh, this will be easy. I'll just you know, record some stuff at the meeting and maybe I'll do an interview with someone afterwards about a very famous case and then it'll be all set and I'll edit it and that was two weeks ago. Yeah. And then what happened was I decided to um, Maybe I better check something. I'm not quite sure about it. So I decided to get in touch with the office of Maura Healy, the state district attorney. And it's funny, I, I, and I remember doing it and thinking, oh, I should tell Stephanie that um, I don't have anyone to fact check me, so I have to fact check myself. And so what I did is I wrote to her and I said, I said, dear press secretary, um, I'm doing this article and I, here's how I understand things and is this okay to say it this way? And she wrote back and said, absolutely not. You, you have it totally wrong. <laughs> here's the information. And she actually sent me a link to a data a spreadsheet and that changed the story entirely. Um, what it, it turns out that over the last five years, the state has been involved in assessing fines over $230,000 worth of fines to employers of people here in Somerville or employers that are based in Somerville. Yeah, I, I guess I, I have one question for no, you. No, ask. Is there, is there like a certain pattern that you've seen while reporting um, on, on this wage theft story? Is, is it more chain restaurants that are doing this or mm -hmm. even you know, small, small business, you know? That, that's a great question um, because I also read a national report and their report was about big chain, big box stores like Home Depot and Walmart and so, but they also had McDonald's. So it obviously happens at the big, at the big national level. But here in Somerville, uh, the biggest, the most egregious one was actually Herb Chambers, which um, is a, it's all over the area, but the Herb, there's a Herb Chambers right down uh, on McGrath. And apparently what, uh, what was happening at Herb Chambers is they were um, washing workers' uniforms every week, but they were charging the workers for the washing. And they didn't make it an option. They were like, give us your uniform, and then they were washing it, and they were deducting from your paycheck without telling you. So that's what that one was, which is totally different than all the other ones. Then I saw a lot of restaurant ones where they're not doing the tips correctly. But then I also saw like garages, subcontractors, construction workers. And then the most interesting and kind of sad one was a daycare center called Terry's Little Pumpkins. So Terry's Little Pumpkins was not paying the, the daycare workers and they got a fine for $14,000, $14, $11,000. Anyway, they're not around anymore. So I don't know where they are. I don't know who they were are. I tried to find them online. I went over to the address. It's a liquor store now. So, mm -hmm. so I don't know what happened. But um, it's like if it isn't for journalists like us, you know, they think this is something that they could get away with. But in, in the end, it, it causes them to have a fine, like of a. Uh, Fourteen thousand dollars. Right, and I'd love to take credit for journal. Uh, actually, in this case, it wasn't journalists; it was workers um, going to complaining to the state. But what the story is actually about, and we're going to look at it, is, um, and that's why journalism is important. Is I can our work can at least help a lot of workers know that this actually exists and it's yeah. okay to complain about. Mm -hmm. But also, right here in the city, there's a movement afoot, um, which the city council supports, to make sure there's a local law protecting workers against this kind of thing. How would they protect them? Well, if you, like, if the Stephanie, if the Stephanie daycare center um, did wage theft in Framingham and then the Stephanie daycare center and, and then maybe and got caught and Stephanie daycare center wanted to set up a daycare in Somerville mm. you won't get a license this new law will allow the state the city to decide who and who who gets to work here and who doesn't so if someone's a real bad actor they won't get a license here 
Um, so yeah, so why don't we take a look at this um, at this story? Yeah, we just published it, and I think and it's online, and it'll, it's also on Channel Three. Let's take a look. But another another time. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. So for all your hard work, I want to say thank you. No, no, stop. <laughs> you find out like the exact numbers you know like did how did they gather all the data oh, okay. Well, thank you so much, Jane. It was really awesome to see all those statistics and all your in-depth reporting. It must have been a really windy day that day. <laughs> yeah, that day was a little bit of a mess. <laughs> I, uh, my hair, I, I uh, actually didn't brush it after getting out of the shower, and then I went to a meeting, and I went so fast that I had forgotten a tripod. So I had to go to the high school to borrow a tripod, and nobody was holding the camera for me, and I was like, trying to stand near City Hall, but like out of the wind, and it's kind of a that's disaster. That's what happens when we're a one-man band. Yeah, you know? although I think one-woman band oh, might, yeah. be more, <laughs> might be more appropriate. Yep. Uh, speaking of working alone, um, you worked alone on a piece um, recently that I saw the Somerville Journal just reposted. Right. Um, it was about the um, approval, well, the potential approval of some recreational marijuana. Um, Free recreational pot shops. Yes. Right, which uh, just two days ago, I think, the 18th, today's the 20th of, of uh, November, and the 18th, two of those three were um, approved, and in Mm -hmm. anybody thinks they're all gonna like run outside now and go get in line no you can't get in line for the first six months it's going to be by appointment only the one on Highland and Union um, why don't you tell us uh, what you did tell us a little bit about uh, the piece that you worked on working alone how that went and then we'll take a look 
Yeah, so I went out uh, just a couple weeks ago, I want to say maybe three weeks ago, um, to talk to just residents in the community and to see what, you know, what their thoughts were about three recreational pot shops opening up. We have two medicinal pot shops already. We have um, one on Broadway, Revolutionary Clinics, and then we ha also have another. Um, I'm forgetting the name right now, but... Um, that's that that's a lot in a four mile you know square you know radius. So um, I went ahead and and spoke with some people at each location, Union Square, the one um, on Highland, and the one off of Highland. Uh, so yeah, we can go ahead and take a look at the video. Great. There are three recreational marijuana businesses being considered for Somerville: one in Davis, one by City Hall, and one right here in Union Square. I went to all three locations to talk to people to see what they had to say. So we are here at 378, 380 Highland Avenue, and this is going to be New England Select Harvest. What do you think about having a recreational pot shop here in Somerville? Oh, uh, I think it's a good idea. Um, okay. I don't partake myself, but um, it's legal. If people want to do that, that's a good thing. Do you think people will be responsible with their pot? I think they will. I think we've seen in other parts of the city the that uh, that seems months. to be the case. So uh, I think Somerville is a great place for that. It's nice to have the uh, lack of bureaucracy and people getting access to stuff. It's basically keep a lot of my friends together and keep them from being anxious wrecks all the time. So uh, more access is great. So it's nice to see it just be easy and easily available. It doesn't seem like legalization already, uh, as gradual as it is, hasn't been uh, very difficult uh, as far as public safety concerns, as far as I can see. So we're here at the second location of the near future recreational pot shop of Somerville. It's right here on Highland Avenue and Central Street. What do you think about Somerville having recreational pot shops? I think it's a great idea and uh, I'm all for it. So I look forward to seeing uh, a few open up and uh, I probably might oh, at, at oh, my yeah. age. <laughs> Even though in my 70s, I still might uh, take a shot at and buy some. In terms of <laughs> as long as it's bringing money into the community, um, I think that that's a positive thing. So this is the third and last recreational pot shop location in Somerville. We're at 71 Union Square. How do you feel about having a recreational pot shop in Somerville? I think uh, pretty, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm in support of it for sure. Um, I just recently moved close to Somerville, <coughs> and I do like recreational marijuana, so where, where? having a shop here would be good. And I think it's been, you know, three years since we passed this law, and uh, the rollout's been very measured and careful, but there's still no, no recreational shops in this area. The closest one is in Brookline, so if they can have one in Brookline, I think they could probably have <coughs> one in Somerville as well. You said you work in recre. You work with pot. Is that what you? No, no. I, I just like it. Okay. <laughs> um, do you think that people are going to be responsible with their marijuana? No, I don't. I think I think everyone is driving high these days, and I think that there's no way to detect it. And they're looking for technologies that will maybe detect it. I think the most recent one I saw was uh, a face mask that that detects whether or not your peripheral vision has deteriorated due to marijuana use by uh, having like flashes on the side, but that's still even very experimental and sort of the, the legal issues that I've heard from police officers is they just have no way to, to know or, or, or any way to detect if even you're actually driving had, like, under the influence. Like, so they really never long. even try to I prosecute thought it was, like, those good, cases. Yeah, I'm not happy about it, sorry. Yeah, that's I just... Explain? I just feel like it's too close to schools and too close to younger children and I just feel like there's going to be too much influence, I'm sorry. That's my opinion and people won't agree with me but that's my honest opinion and I have four children and three of them adult age and one's in senior in high school and I have a grandchild here and I just... I think they're good. every community should have one. I mean. Unfortunately, you know, the federal government still criminalizes it, so if it was decriminalized, I think we would find so many more other uh, health benefits for it. But, um, you know, I mean, this is a busy busy uh, square, and it's probably a good place. It could be good for the community, I think, as much as a stimulus, you know what I mean? Like people think, oh, you know, but 
I think it's fine. This is a great little location. I would probably do the same if I was in the business. So. The Somerville Licensing Commission <clears throat> plans to have its next public hearing on November 18th. Then the decisions go to the planning board and then to the state. For Somerville Neighborhood News, I'm Stephanie Wittenbach. Wow, that was really great. I mean, it was a couple of weeks ago, but I, like I said, the Somerville Journal just put it in again because it's it's really nice to hear from from our neighbors what they think about things. And I think it's really enterprising that you went to actually one of the locations. I was just looking out the window, it's right over there. Uh, but you, the other ones, you had to go lug all your stuff up there and talk to people. Um, and I think you were alone all the yeah, time. I was. I so, was. So let's see. That's been about seven or six or seven weeks that you've been serving as a reporter and at part time because you have another job mm -hmm. also. Um, how's it been? What have you learned? What do you think you're never going to be a reporter again in your no. life? Like, what do you think? I think over the past six or seven weeks, um, it's this experience has shown me what it is to be a, an, a reporter um, and to do my due diligence to the community and and serve it well and also approaching city and state officials um, with utmo utmost respect and also um, just communication, like communicating whether that's by email or or phone um, and knowing that, yes, we, we do have, you know, the power to um, get the information we want and um, just knowing that is super, um, it's awesome. So I'm really thankful for this opportunity and I, I can't wait to see what other stories we get to do for Somerville. Now, are you ever nervous like before making a call? Because I've taught journalism before and students are always saying how, or many students are saying, I don't know if I can make the call and I, I have anxiety issues and I don't know, like can I just text the person or um, I know I've met a lot of people your age who, who want to be journalists, but they really struggle with making phone calls because you guys text so much. Yeah. How has that been for you? Have you been, Yeah. you know, how's, it, how's that experience been for you? So I don't think I'm as so much nervous to make the call. Mm -hmm. I think it's more of like, what, what is the question that I want to ask them? I want to make sure that the question I'm asking is the right thing that I want to you know, get out of um, our conversation. Um, I don't want to waste anyone's time. And I'm also, just in general, I'm a very like paranoid person. So like, I just like always think like, oh, like do they think that I'm like trying to get something out of them? Or like, you know what I mean? Like, I just wanted to be very like respectful and like have a good, you know, relationship, even though if it is something that I do want to get out that perhaps they might not like. Um, I think it's, and that, that's going to come with time. It's going to come with um, more experience in communicating with them by email and by phone um, and knowing exactly what the story is and like what I like truly want to ask them because what am I to be scared of? Like I'm the journalist here. I'm the one who has the power, right? So, that's right. That's yeah. right. In fact, they call um, journalism the fourth estate. Um, it's referring to the three estates. It goes back to the French Revolutionary government, but the three different estates, it was the, um, the bourgeoisie, and then the, the, uh, the royalty, and then the parliament, and the fourth estate, sort of keep everyone honest, was the journalist who sat up in this gallery. And um, that's our job, and sometimes people don't like if we expose something that they might not have wanted exposed, but if they're honest people, if they're people um, who uh, are trying to do the right thing in their, in their private business or in their, as a public servant or as a construction worker, um, then you know th they can always be brought around to see that actually they have nothing to fear. Uh, the truth is not something they have to fear, and in fact, it's their responsibility. Um, and speaking of responsibility, uh, you and I worked together on election day, and I really had fun working with you because people love talking to you. <laughs> and um, we worked together on election day, and we were talking to people about their civic responsibility. Right. Um, and it's funny, you were just talking about um, the power of journalism and um, you know what you've been learning and talking to city officials and state officials. And in fact, election day and elections and voting kind of goes hand in hand with journalism in that to be um, an educated voter, to know how to, to vote, to know who you ought to choose, you've got to actually understand the issues in your city, in your state, and in your country. Right. And then you've got to be able to decide, oh, that person um, does represent what I think is the best thing for my city or my state. And so 
Um, we're at a, a very scary moment in the United States because there are less and less local and uh, local and what we call hyper local news outlets. Um, that's one reason I wanted to start uh, Somerville Neighborhood News up again because r right here in this city we have the Somerville Journal, which is really great, but it used to be one journalist. Uh, a boss, like an editor, and a journalist, and a lot of freelancers, and now it's just one human being, and she doesn't even have an office. Right. So luckily, we work really well together with her, with Julia. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, so why don't we end by looking at this story that you and I did together um, on Election Day, and about elections, and about why do people vote. Yeah. Let's take a look. Seven polls, 21 precincts citywide even if only about 25% of Somerville residents came out to vote. You have to vote, especially if you're a woman. It's a, you know, that's a privilege. There's countries where people, are, you know, are dead dying and they can't vote. So yeah, I'll come out, snow sums, everything. I, no matter what, I'll vote. So when it comes well, voting in the election is a good thing for people to do. You know, you have to elect your, uh, you know, well, your representative. You know, you have to know who is governed, you know. So it's always a pleasure for me to call. 13,000 people turned out. One of their concerns, the mayoral race. Eight-term Mayor Joe Curtitone was being challenged by Marianne Wallace. We get uh, Mayor Joe's uh, postcard every year at Christmas time, and <clears throat> that's enough for me. <laughs> I have to live here, but uh, can I say one thing? It may go against me. I believe in term limits. No, she didn't. No. no mayor in the city's history has served for more than 10 years. But she got it. You don't ever want to have a monopoly. Um, if you have a monopoly that stagnates change, it stagnates process, progress, um, I think on paper he's done a good job, but I think a lot of those changes have been based on him being pushed. Um, and I would prefer to have a mayor for the town that I chose to live in that uh, truly believes in what the change is going to be. The city's elections commissioner is more concerned about getting every vote counted. At the end of the day, the ballots are uh, uh, counted by the machine. We have a uh, tabulator at each precinct, and once all the ballots are in, the voters are finished, 8 o'clock comes, and, and after the last person has cast their vote, really? and once oh, yeah. everything is the way it's supposed to be, we press the button, and, and that generates the, the uh, tape with the results. Later at City Hall, campaign workers waited I anxiously. So I was able to use that footage. Her to tone won a ninth turn, but Wallace was not far behind. Although Marianne Wallace lost the race, she won a lot no, by entering this campaign. That's why. The yeah, mayor moved to embrace a lot of the issues that she supported, like and we consider like that this, a victory okay. as a result of the race. In spite of how the weather turned out, this people still came out to play their part in democracy. For Somerville Neighborhood News, I'm Stephanie Wittenbach. <laughs> well, Stephanie, why are you laughing? I think you did a great job. <laughs> Thank you so much. No, you did a great job. We as a team did a great job. Yeah, it was fun. It was yeah. fun because, um, to be honest, you work a job where you actually get paid. Yeah. So you were at your paid job at night. <laughs> and so I went up to City Hall with my little camera, except I didn't always use the tripod, so I got criticized by my intern. Uh, for the shaky footage. But thank you anyways. I, I needed that footage and we're a team so I, I can't do this without you. Well I always say journalism is a team sport. So this whole thing about like you're gonna be all famous and have a headline and you're the blah blah blah. No way. There's no way you can do anything mm -mm. alone. So um, that's about it from here uh, in 90 Union Square in the old firehouse. I'm Jane Regan from Somerville Neighborhood News. Thank you, thank you very much for joining us. And, and I'm Stephanie Wittenbach, the SNN reporter. And uh, you can check out all of our latest stories and stuff that we are going to be having in the next couple of weeks at www.somervillemedia.org. Right, slash SNN or on Channel 3. Thanks again. Bye. <laughs>